I have to owe the credit to the art to my art teacher from when I was like, I guess in my teens, 11 to 18, I had one art teacher at school and art was one of my favorite subjects, art and design. And whenever we do a piece of art, he'd always, like whether it was a painting, I was terrible at painting, but I was pretty good at graphic. So I was terrible at fine art too. But anytime we draw something or put a collage together or do something graphically, the number one question he'd go to me is, why did you do that? Like, why is that color next to that color? Right. Why is that item on top of that item? Why is that juxtaposed next to that? Like, his question would be like, why did you do that? Yeah. And if I didn't have an answer, he, I'd get a low grade. Mm. And if I had an answer, even though it didn't look visually as good, I'd get a good grade. Because his whole point was about meaning. It was always about, are you meaningfully connecting art colors and designs and objects and themes and visions or are you just doing it because it looks good and and i think that's a beautiful way of looking at storytelling are you trying to tell a story so that it looks good or are you trying to tell a story because it's going to be meaningful to the viewer so the way i explain this is that there's two types of storytellers there's two types of creators imagine a spectrum imagine one end of a spectrum and the other end and one, of the, one end of the spectrum, you have selfish creators, what I like to call selfish creators. These are people who create simply for themselves. It's the people who get high off their own supply, right? It's like <laughs> you made a video or you wrote a book just because you thought your idea was amazing, right. right? You think what you have to say is so amazing that you make a video that you enjoy and maybe a few of your friends tell you it's good and maybe there's a niche for you that you can grow into. But you're a selfish creator. You're only making videos because you feel like making them for yourself. That's one end of the spectrum. Nothing wrong with that. No judgment. I'm just making a, just, just sharing how, how it works. The other end of the scale, you have what I call, uh, you have what I call sellout creators. So sellout creators only tell stories that they think people are going to love. They only tell stories that they think are going to go viral. They only focus on stuff that they think is going to get likes. And what happens there is you may even get likes but you won't feel fulfilled inside. You may even get followers and views. You might not, you probably won't, but even if you did, you still won't feel like you've made an impact or anything, right? Right. And, and that's why what I talk about is being, a, a, the best storytellers are selflessly self-aware. Self-aware, selfless, self-aware and selfless. So what I mean by that is the best storyteller has the deepest understanding of people's pain and problems because they've either lived through them themselves or they've lived through them with others. And then their focus is on saying, how is the best way of communicating this? And it may not be a video. It may be a written piece. It may be a whole book. It may be a speech. It doesn't have to be the same format. And then really figuring out how does this connect with people? So I always say to people that I, I spent the last 12 years of my life sitting with people, listening to their problems. When I was a monk, I used to coach people for free, for no money, for more hours in, a, in the day than, than I could possibly do. And I would sit with them and just, just discuss their problems and help them out of it. And that gave me a much stronger understanding of human behavior. So for me, storytelling is a deep understanding of human pain, human behavior, and then the most, most ideal format for communicating that.